In this video, I just want to quickly go ahead and showcase the result of the inventory slash shop system tutorial series as it is now complete. So currently this series has a total of 45 videos and there will probably be about four to five more added on top of this as I will be covering a feature requested by one of my patrons just to go ahead and add on to the series. So this series will start to roll out in probably I think about 25 days from the release of this video that you're watching now to the public and if you want early access to it obviously with all my videos you can subscribe to my patreon you'll get early access to nearly everything that i go through and release and it only costs you a dollar if you like donating more then great i appreciate it and if you donate ten dollars or more you also get access to my patreon only team deathmatch series which is about a hundred something videos where we obviously create team deathmatch so to begin with this series what all we've done everything is network and set up to be multiplayer ready and that goes for both listen servers and dedicated servers. But if we press I, we have our own inventory over here. And if we walk up to the shop, we can see here's the shopkeeper's inventory over here. So here we have the shopkeeper. And it's not centered right now because I was testing for the uh, videos. I would have to crunch up the screen size a bit. So to make it fit in the screen, I had to move it over. But yeah, here is currently the shopkeeper's inventory of items that we can purchase. And if we want to purchase some items, we have to go through, pick up some gold, which is these uh, golden little squares. And as you can see, we now have 400 gold. So I can walk up to here. A uh, med kit, I think, costs 50. So I'll buy one for 50. I'll buy some bread and all that fun stuff. And over here, whoops, we have our stats, which currently just displays food and health by default. But if I go ahead and use the med kit, as you can see, my health at the bottom there is now at 10. If I go ahead and use some food, I'll go ahead and use both of them. My hunger goes down to negative 60. So those are just kind of dis to display that the system is actually taking effect on your character. Now everything again is replicated. So that works all in the clients just fine. We also have stackable items. So currently there's nothing but gold in my inventory. And if I want to, I could pick up this block here which as you can see is a med pack and the stat count is 60. I come over to this guy. Again, it's a med kit, but the stat count is one. So if I pick up that med kit there, we're walking up and pressing E. Oh, apparently there's seven of them in there. Why are there seven? I think that's the last one. There we go. Apparently I never saved when I edited my level, but I pick up one of those med kits as you can see, I have one. I pick up the stack of 60. As you can see now, I have 61. So it goes through and the items do stack. So that's how we have our gold system and everything set up because they, again, items stack, so they just fill up the single slot. If I want to, I can go through and use them all, all that fun stuff. Now when it comes down to item use and the grid slot. So for example, I have in slot one, the bed kit. In slot two, I have the bread. If I go ahead and use up my first slot here of med kit and reopen my inventory it's still empty but if i want to i can go ahead and pick up another item and it'll fill that slot there so that goes pretty much for the entire well system so that can be filled it just acts as an empty slot so if i wanted to replace it with gold i could do so like so so now gold takes over that slot now this system is set up to be very very similar so what i mean by that is your code only gets altered or sorry your code only really has to be changed in one place and it affects both systems to some extent so the way this is set up is this shopkeeper has just an array of items here now same thing goes with our player for our player inventory we have just again an array of items and each one is replicated so this gets changed live so I can show you that. I'll play as a listen server. So we have one client and one server. Let me go ahead and drag this guy out. And down just a bit. Hopefully you'll be able to see decently. Then I'll go ahead and I'll just pick up some gold. And I'll open the shop on the client. And then I'll open the shop on the server. And so i got to drag that out a bit. This is what I was referring to about the uh, widgets not fitting quite right. So... Here we have the client on the left hand side, the inventory of the shopkeeper. Let me buy a medkit on the server. Well, I just bought it so it went down to four 
med kits on the shopkeeper. And as you can see, it replicated down live to the client. So everything updates as it's supposed to. So I can go through and I can buy some bread here on the client and it updates on the server. And again, it updates to all other clients as well. And that state gets kept. So if I view the shopkeeper again on the server, the states are the exact same. So they have the exact same amount of stack size. So replication there and all that kind of fun stuff, that's not an issue. That's taken care for you behind the scenes and you don't have to worry about it. And all you have to do to, for example, add a new item is we come over here, we have our item base class, which gold and food are derived from. And again, they all inherit from our interface. I could take this item. I could just create another one of whatever we want. Let's call it BP. Uh, let's see, what would be a good name for an item? Uh, I guess dirt. So why not? We have nothing else I can think of off the top of my head. So I'll just give it a random mesh. Like, uh, screw it. Why not do a staircase and we'll scale it down 0 .0, or 0 0.1. Something like that. And I can take that staircase here. Oops, I still have these duplicate. I don't need those. And I'll drag this dirt right down into there. So here's my new item. Now we have some things we can add to the item. Obviously the item class, which should get filled out by default later on. But we just set it to dirt. We give it an image. I'll just do the random, let's just do this, yeah, this random uh, occlusion, whatever, color ID mask. Then the item cost, which we don't really have to worry about unless we're going to go to sell. And by default, I like leaving as one. So one item that you see is one that you pick up. So now I can just walk up, hit play, and here is my mesh there, my dirt. I can pick it up. I'll pick it up on the client. And as you can see, it is now in my inventory right there. And same goes if you want to add an item to this, a specific shopkeeper. You can just go right on through. We'll just add in another array of items, which takes in. Whoops, I need to actually view the, how do I reset? I haven't used Unreal Engine 5 all that much. Go to the Blueprint Editor. And as you can see, here's an array of items for this shopkeeper. I'll add the dirt. And again, it just kind of takes in the same image. But let's give this an item cost of 150. And we'll just do, give it a stack count of three. So don't, the shopkeeper only has three of these items. Actually, I don't need to show you the replication anymore because that's already established. So I'll go ahead and pick up my gold. Go to the shopkeeper. Here's the dirt. I can buy one. Takes down 150, two. And I can no longer purchase because I don't have enough gold. I'll just buy two more med kits and go from there. And then same thing goes. You can make an attempt to use the item. But in this case, it has no effect because I have it not written out the functionality for it. So all I've done is just simply made a blueprint class derived from the item base. So that's one way you can add new items that way and all that fun stuff. But again, this is mostly a C++ tutorial, so we have it set up so you override a certain function that is inside of the interactable interface. So that way when you go to use it, that gets triggered. And that can easily be set up, and I'll probably end up actually doing this if I remember, to fire a blueprint event so you if you want to you can easily override that event inside of blueprint so you don't have to do any c++ code if you don't want to for specific you know items anyways that's just a brief overview again we go through a couple different ways of actually adding items for example to our inventory like the first way was if we picked up these three items what would happen is we would have one piece of bread here one bread here one bread here the items did not stack and then I ended up deciding to switch it to a stack-based system. So you get the luxury of, obviously, learning how to do both kind of setups. So, again, uh, last, this is pretty much the last thing I can think of. The way items get stored in your inventory. So currently, when you pick up an item, that actor actually gets destroyed. So it no longer exists in the world. Instead, what happens is we construct a structure that we made that contains you know all the information we need for that item like the stack count the image the class that the actor is and all that fun stuff and it gets added into our inventory and constructed that way into a blueprint widget then when we go to use the item we use the class default object to actually make use of it so we can add the functionality inside of the class default object that we use to 
well, make use of it. Like, for example, med kits, they add to our health. Food, it takes away from our hunger. So that's how we take care of this system. So it's very efficient. Everything, again, is event-driven. And same thing goes for even our widgets. When we initially create our widgets, we are creating the initial item slot. So these are all widgets. And instead of going through and adding and removing, all we're doing is replacing the contents and simply updating them. So that way we don't have to worry about destroying and creating a bunch of different widgets when all we can do is just keep the same slot count or slot number and overwrite the information that they contain. And the exact same thing goes for the shopkeeper because the shopkeeper is using our actual inventory widget, this one right here. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Again, if you want early access to this series, feel free to hop into my Patreon. It can only cost you a dollar. And after, I believe it was 25 days, I have to double check, but after 25 days, these videos should start rolling out one by one, so one video a day, just like I do normally, until the series is completely released and free to the public. So, as always, I'll see you in the next video.